Yeah, Brian, I agree. I agree, mate. I certainly. to be here. Hope you're alright. Do let me know that you can hear my voice in the chat. That would be very helpful. If uh, you can let me know that you can hear me and then I'll crack on with this evening's exciting journey into Windows. Good golly yes. <laughs> oh yes, this is the one. This is the one we've been waiting for. You know, I reckon I can do this in five minutes and I can th then go and have a drink somewhere and then we'll be done, which is awesome. I've uh, I've completely, I have all the answers. The solutions are, are within your grasp. They're going to come up in the next few minutes. It's a very exciting time. Breakthrough time, I think you could say. This is the video that will that'll stand, <laughs> will be out there uh, righting all of the wrongs and um, bringing us back to that happy place where we can just make music without having to worry about the platform. Yeah, you can hear me Ian, good. Sounds great, great. I'm glad it sounds great. I'm good at sounding great today. Feeling better today than I was. Was it yesterday with my... No, yesterday was good. No, I'm thinking about Wednesday night with my disaster of a bit week <laughs> live stream. But it wasn't a disaster. It was just a bit all over the place. I, I feel more focused. I feel more focused tonight. So what is tonight about? Titles, title off. Yeah, I did that. Didn't I do that? I thought I did that. There we go. I'll do that again. Thank you for the reminder. Thank you for the reminder. I'm going to sit here now and wait until I can see it's gone. <laughs> All right, so let me get a few things straight, okay, to start with, is that I'm, I'm not here to talk about whether Linux is better, whether Macs are better, not here to argue the toss over whether you, we all should be using Windows XP uh, or Windows 7. None of those things uh, are important this evening. I don't care. You can talk about it as much as you like in the chat, but I'm not going not gonna to be drawn on those sorts of things. Tonight is to talk about Windows, specifically Windows 10, because it's been around for donkeys now, and that's what you should be on. If you're not on Windows 10, there's something wrong with you. If you don't like Windows 10, that's fine. I'm not here to persuade you that Windows 10 is awesome. For me, personally, in my decades of use of Windows since uh, version 3.1, Windows 10 is awesome to me, for me. I love the File Explorer. I love what they've done with all of that. I mean, that was the point really for me when moving away from Windows 7. I know everybody hated Windows 8, except for me, I was a Windows 8 fanboy because I had touchscreens, right? But anyway, what they did when they moved from Windows 7 to Windows 8 is that they revolutionized the File Explorer, and that was the most exciting thing ever. It speeded up the workflow no end, and that has continued into Windows 10. And uh, that, for me, above anything else, makes it a superior operating system. Simply the file management, the way you get around the place. Everything else is Windows dressing. Don't care about that. I just run the software I want to run. Easy. No hassle. So, yeah, I, I'm not that interested in having a conversation about whether Windows 10 is great or not. That's not the point. What we're here to do this evening is for me to, to suggest to you the tweaks that I believe uh, work <laughs> in getting your system running properly for music production. I mean, that, that's kind of it. That's, that's, the, that's the gist of it. Now, where do these tweaks come from? come from many many places and from many many years i i haven't just like looked them up on the internet uh you know i've been i've been building computers uh since the early 90s um and i've been building computers professionally for studios since the late 90s and for all the years in between and when you have to um, provide a computer system to a client, a client is hoping to use it as their studio or part of their studio, it has to work. You can't have it arrive and it be a bit glitchy or not play audio back properly or not sync MIDI, all those sorts of things. That's not 
that's not something you're trying to achieve. You're trying to achieve the opposite. It just has to work out of the box. And so I've had to uh, manage that and produce that in a commercial a client paying environment. And so through the years of doing this thing, being unable to deliver a computer to somebody if it doesn't work, I have learnt various tips and tricks along the way that work, that genuinely work in a recording environment. I mean, there are loads and loads and loads of tweaks that you can do of different things for gaming, for overclocking, for general use, and, and well, that's fine. But I'm not, I'm not the sort of person who wants to uh, strip Windows down to nothing at all so it only can possibly run Pro Tools because that's not a realistic situation. It could be your situation, oh, of course, there's always somebody who says, oh, well, that's exactly what I do. I run Windows in kiosk mode, ace, and I never touch, never attach it to the internet. Great, brilliant, that's great, that's fine. That's not what this is about. I'm trying to reach the majority of people, you know? <laughs> the people who are most likely to be using a computer in a normal way. So that means, yeah, you tend to go on the internet. Yeah, you tend to look at stuff and download crappy bits of software. Yeah, you install a whole load of plugins. That shouldn't matter. That shouldn't interrupt your ability to make music on your computer. So my credentials are that I have been building computers for 25 years um, professionally. 25 years? That's too many. 20, let's call it 20 years but much longer than I actually build them, but 20 years professionally. And, yeah, no, that's right. <laughs> and so I have some experience in this. That's thousands of computers that I've built for studios, you know. So uh, I don't mean to, to blow my own trumpet or to say, you must listen to me, but I'm just giving you that background so that you're aware that I'm not coming at this as just some kind of internet hack guy who's just looked up a bunch of gaming websites or spent five minutes on gear sluts. No, no, I've been doing this for real in the field. Um, I've been up and down with Windows, up and down with computer hardware, PC hardware. Uh, it's got, given us all sorts of trouble in the past. Um, but here we are. I'm out the other side. I don't really do it anymore. Um, but I'm still very much attached to the world of computers in what I do with the Surface in particular. And that's a very good point, actually, because tonight's going to be a couple of things. I'm going to start off by doing some general tweaks, which won't take long because there isn't a whole lot to it. There really isn't. So we'll start with that. And then I'm going to move on to the Surface. The reason being is that the Surface is a particular type of laptop. There are lots of laptops of this type. And that's one which has a processor which really, really wants to shut down all the time. A very power-saving processor. There's a lot of laptops that have that. They're the sleek ones, the nice-looking ones, the gorgeous ones, the ones that are light and easy to carry. They have, unfortunately, this processor inside that doesn't want to stay on all the time, which makes them pretty unsuitable for music, it has to say. But we like them. You know, <laughs> we like the form factor, we like the creativity, and if you're buying a laptop for music, there's no reason why you would know that this is not particularly suitable. You, you because know, you don't want to buy a big, thick, heavy um, laptop that's got a desktop processor in it. That doesn't really occur to you. You're thinking of mobility, you're thinking of sleekness and loveliness. So, uh, so when dealing with the Surface Pro, as I have been for a number of years now, uh, I have developed ways and methods of getting it to work as well as it can within the constraints of its specification, you know? And that's pretty good. I mean, I was just playing... I was just playing this thing perfectly well, completely fine. Um, and as it turns out, the, the current uh, Windows updates, uh, everything, the very, very latest Windows updates, like the May update and the, May, and the updates since then, uh, I'm currently on the 22H update, I think, which is the, the very latest one. It's performing brilliantly, I have to say. Absolutely brilliantly. I was trying to tweak it this afternoon, and it's like, well, that's not making any difference because it's already running brilliantly. But, you know, I found things, and I'll be able to do that. So what I mean, general tweaks, and then we're going to look at the Surface specifically because there are some problems that the Windows updates have introduced by which I mean they've removed some of the settings that we used to use. And so I will show you, hopefully, how to put those back in. Where did I put them? <laughs> so we're going to tackle that. 
So everything about the May update, the 2004 update and the update since, that is what we're going to be tackling. So if you're worried about uh, connected standby or CS enabled or disabled, uh, if you're worried about power profiles, then this is going to be the session for you. And then once we've done that, I'm then going to demonstrate what happens uh, on a system like the Surface when you start loading up plugins, uh, when you start hitting temperature thresholds, when it starts throttling, and those sorts of issues, just to demonstrate the sort of thing that we're up against and how best to come to a decision to fix it. Yeah? How does that sound? Does that sound like a good plan for this evening? I hope so. Uh, throw some things in the comments if you've got questions at this point while I just take a sip and I'll uh, say hello to a few people. While you're doing that, I'll stick the ARP back on. Anyway, let me not waste your time. Let me just have a check, say hello to a few people. Uh, sorry, I'm leaning across the camera a little bit, well, uh, but who cares? Who cares? That's just what we're going to go with today. Um, hi, Brian. Lots of Brian's and brains in this evening. Good to see you all. Um, <laughs> so Zilla the Great, he's watching and hearing everything from his Molten Muse Plus. Now that's a delicious computer. I really enjoyed making the the Muse computers. They're brilliant, completely silent. You know, I mean, they would heat a room, sure, but completely silent. I mean, I the first one I ever built, I built as a, as a home entertainment system for myself. You know, uh, ran Windows... Uh, media center on it. God, why, why, why did they let that go? That that was such a brilliant system. I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed all of that because it could, you could pipe in all your music. You could pipe in videos from other places. It was great. Now you have to put up with some kind of J River nonsense and uh, oh, anyway, but but yeah, the Muse, brilliant, absolutely brilliant. And I had a fair whack as in, as well at, at being able to run uh, music software. It's not as powerful as a massive desktop. But it certainly had at least, you know, laptop and beyond level power. And sometimes that's all you need. That's all you need. I just want to know how to get Windows 10 workable. Well, I don't know. I mean, what what is it about Windows 10 that's not working for you? It's just an operating system. You turn your computer on. You can either then press on the icon that you want to use software with, uh, or you press start and type the thing you want to do. That's it. That's all the OS does. Nothing more than that. What are you doing in Windows 10 that you're finding difficult? Just a question. Just a question. And I wasn't promising to answer it either. <laughs> Why are the two dislikes already? Well, because I criticise things. I have an opinion and I'm sometimes critical of the industry that we love. It's crazy, isn't it, that you can actually enjoy something and yet be critical of it. And, you know, similarly, people are being critical of, of my output, of my content, you know, and that's fine. <laughs> that's fine. Is there a way to get Windows into advanced mode only? No, I mean, what does that even mean? Like I say, what is it you're trying to do that you're not able to, to do? <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I'm sure, I'm sure, I'm sure you, you're you coming from a good place and all that, and I don't mean to... Uh, I don't mean to make fun at all. Can't you still access a lot of hidden stuff in the group policy? Not going to be talking about group policies this evening. No group policy stuff. No hard stuff. There's no hard stuff at all. There might be a little bit on the surface because there's a, a, a tiny bit of PowerShell involved. 
but that's only copying and pasting and just doing what you're told. It doesn't require any thought. So, you know, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it, honestly. Do not worry about it. Andrew, hi. How old is my Surface? What processor? This is a Surface Pro 7. I think it's still the current one. I mean, it was probably due a new one about now, I would have thought. But as my understanding is, this is the Surface Pro 7. Although the one I will be demonstrating the Surface tweaks on, because I've already done it on this one, and so it's not quite so effective, is I'll demonstrate it on my Surface Pro 6, which is what I use over there, which is my work one. So this is my music making one. I've got one over there, which is the last generation. And um, I'll show you the tweaks on that because I've already performed them on this one in order to test out that they work. Does that make sense? What the processor is, oh, I can't remember. I'll, I'll look it up in a minute. We'll have a look through the system settings and, and we will see. Uh, do you have a video about how to partition the SSD main drive? No, no, I've got no interest in doing that. Why would you want to do that? What is your thinking behind doing that? The only possible reason for partitioning the SSD drive in a system like this is for your own personal organization. And what I would recommend you do is embrace the idea of the documents folder. Embrace it. Embrace the OneDrive mentality. It's all right. There's no, there's no performance reason to partition a hard drive. It's purely organizational, I would suggest. Oh, I mean, the other thing I want to, to, to just acknowledge, put my hands up here to say, is that you may well have completely different ideas to me, and that's okay. I've already given you the reasons why I believe my thoughts on this to be correct, you know, through experience, that kind of thing. But that's not to say that you haven't had your own experience of things and work some things out or have deeper knowledge of certain areas of Windows that you believe is important. That's okay, it's all right for you to do that. It's all right for you to believe that and I'm not gonna correct you as such. I might be cheeky in the chat, you know, I might might be a bit sarcastic <laughs> or make fun of people, but you're completely within your rights to have your own ideas about this. I will just show you mine and what I believe is right and I will answer your queries and tell you what I believe is the right way to go about it. So there'll be tons of stuff, tons of stuff. Because, I mean, I can tell you uh, that I spoke to somebody on Facebook earlier. They might well be here, I don't know, uh, from Geek Performer, uh, who have just published an ebook of Windows 10 optimizations. And it's like, it, it runs to like 70 pages. It's extraordinary. I mean, an enormous amount of depth. However, I think only about three of the things in that whole book are necessary. But if you have different experiences with how you run your software and your hardware and the computers that you encounter in your life, then you may have a longer list and that's okay. But we're gonna start off with the ones that I suggest uh, and see where we go. See if that makes any difference, yeah? <laughs> I mean, another thing I would say is that uh, Windows tweaking is really troubleshooting because there's every, every possibility that you'll buy a computer, build a computer, turn it on, and it will work brilliantly, and it will continue to work brilliantly, and you'll never have a problem. That's absolutely what the major happens to the majority of people, you know? So you don't need, we're not in the situation anymore where you need to tweak Windows in order to get anything to work, because normally speaking, it should already work. We are looking really to tweak Windows for people who are encountering problems. That's the point at which you should start tweaking Windows, really, you know? And to also add that there's a lot of legacy tweaks out there that people still use that are just irrelevant, you know? <laughs> they don't do anything. And I will try to highlight those as we go, all right? Andrew says, give me a tour of my computer specs. Well, the computer I actually do most of my work on is over there. It's an i9-9900K. There you go. Not bad, that one. This, uh, sorry, I'll look up the specs in a minute because I can never remember. They call the processors something weird these days. So yeah, I was just having a look through the initial things. Black sequencer, yes, yes. Ever played a keyboard with sausage? No, no, I haven't. Oh, that all went pear-shaped. Mr. Grumpy, <laughs> it's all right. I haven't said anything important yet. I've never exceeded 60 degrees on it. That's great, mate. 
because it does. I mean, it, it's just it's just it it is built to radiate that much heat. It has the ability to get rid of that 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 amount of watts through its fins, so it is perfect. That's all you need, you know. You'll see on here that that's actually a bit more of a struggle on a system like this. People have lost the understanding of criticism. Yeah, maybe. Is there any way of creating an aggregate audio device in Windows for multiple USB audio interfaces into one computer? Yes, you can do it with something called ASIO for All. It's a bit flaky. But then so is creating aggregate um, audio interfaces on Apple. It's always been a bit flaky. It's not something which is perfect unless you have them by the same manufacturer and they're very easily locked together through software. If you're using USB audio interfaces from different manufacturers, then there may well be clocking problems that you're going to have between the two, which is just the nature of the beast. So unless you can uh, word clock them or something else together, then it's not always um, as easy as people think. People think, oh yeah, that's really easy. But actually, not many people really do it successfully. It's kind of a temporary measure, and then you go, oh, sod this, I'll buy a bigger audio interface, which is ultimately what happens. But if you're talking about ASIO or Wasapi or Windows Audio, then no, you can't aggregate uh, a device. But ASIO for all will let you do it. As I say, it's just a, it's a very clever layer of stuff that runs within Windows, which has a good fudge at doing it. But my advice is get a bigger audio interface. It would be lovely if those things would, would work brilliantly and seamlessly, but you know. This is where we are. <laughs> yeah, I do express an opinion. You're on 8.1. <laughs> See, 8.1 was a sweet spot. That was really nice, 8.1. I enjoyed that. You know, I appreciate that Windows 8 was like a, what on earth is happening here? And yeah, it wasn't completely helpful, except for me, because I had a touch screen. But, you know, 8.1 really sorted it out. You know, that was the step towards 10 that it needed. Ah, oh, you see, why would you boot into two things? I mean, I'm on a bit of a mission these days. I mean, in the past, yeah, I've had multiple boots into this, into that, and the other. You know, I've set up SCSI raids and other raids and other systems, partitioning drives, putting something on here, back up onto there. So, you know, uh, there's something about PCs that makes us want to make them as complicated as possible. So maybe just because we can, or maybe because we all discovered computers through that IT guy at work that time, and he's just a complete nut, and that's just how things were. But I've found later in life that if I just let these things go, if I just let Windows do its thing, if I don't worry quite so much about where files and folders are, you know, everything gets smoother. Everything gets easier. So uh, don't make things so hard for yourself. Don't worry about dual booting into another OS. Why do you want to do that? Oh, geez. <laughs> I'm sure you have proper reasons. You know, run virtual machines. That's the other answer. Native VS, probably, but can you count that in plugins? What do you need to tweak when you have a hugely powerful games machine? I don't know. I mean, the question is, are you having any problems running software instruments or audio software? If you're not having any problems, you don't need to tweak anything. Yeah. <laughs> it's that simple. This is one of the things I'm trying to get across. Yeah. There was a time, definitely, where you had to go through a list of tweaks, and that was very important. These days, if it's, if it's working, that's great. Now, is there that possibility that you're missing out on a whole load of performance you didn't know you could use? Well, I suppose, possibly. So if you're hitting the limits of your system, yeah, maybe, again, that's another opportunity to have a look at tweaking. Yeah. Anyway, we'll get to them in a minute. We'll get to them in a minute and I'll get started and then it'll be over really quick. I'm just going to, you know, just uh, these questions are interesting. I feel invigorated by them and I think it's there's a lot. I think uh, there's a lot I want to give out if I'm able to, if I can give out a lot of stuff, a lot of information that I think will be helpful. That will be helpful regardless of how uh, pretentious it makes me sound. <laughs> 
But hey, it's my show, man. Do you want a partition to protect your files when a system part partition kills itself? Yeah, yeah, maybe. <laughs> I have had a chance to try uh, Vital. Yes, I was playing with it earlier. Actually, it is great, isn't it? I love it's. I love the fact that it's so animated. I mean, I talk about this a lot. How I really like software that uses the fact that it's on screen and can go in all over the place. I like that. It sounds great. You know, and it's got all this stuff going on. I might even buy it, I think. I'm only looking at the free version at the moment. But yeah, great. Really good. And yeah, well, yeah. Anyway, what was I saying? Partitioning. Yeah, yeah, it, it's a safety valve, if you like, to have your system on one partition and your files on the other. But that's only partially safe. It's much safer to have two hard drives, two different drives, SSD, whatever they are, two drives. So you have one drive for your system separate drive for your files and that way if a drive dies it is more likely than a partition I would say then um, you can easily restore that drive from your backup and your files are separate yeah so that's what I would recommend a two drive system if possible you can't do it on something like this but if it's possible then that would be preferred partitioning I think to some degree even gives you a false sense of security so for me, partitioning is, as I say, purely organisational. But if it makes, if it helps you sleep, those sorts of things, then that's cool. That's really cool. It's the focus, all right. I've just been desperately trying to make sure uh, that stays in. Anyway, uh, da, 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 da. flaky, yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, also, I don't... Oh, I didn't mean for that to happen on the thing. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean for you to get a good zoom in on my ear. That's just fantastic. All right, I'm not doing that again. So, um, what was I saying? Oh, yeah, I was about to say that uh, I don't have a great deal of knowledge on AMD. I built AMD systems back in the bad old days in the past. Um, I... I haven't done recently and so I've been very much an Intel person uh, for all for really brilliant reasons and so when people ask me about Ryzen and stuff it's like I, I don't I don't really know I don't have an, an opinion they're probably really fast great awesome but hopefully the principles that I'm going to talk about here which we'll get to in a minute how long has this been going <laughs> half an hour and I haven't given a single tweak out yet right right okay okay all right let me just skip through a little bit yeah Yeah, okay. Just want to get rid of crackles and pops, said Snap. Yes. <laughs> if it works, make music. Yes, yes, let's do that. Yeah, sorry about that. What do I think about recording to SSD versus M2 and HDs? Honestly, mate, I was recording 100 tracks of audio to 5400 RPM drives 20 years ago. There is no problem. There's no bottleneck in recording to hard drives, mechanical hard drives. There's no bottleneck. It, you know, that's not the limit that you hit. <laughs> so uh, you can record to anything you like. Honestly, there's no problem with hard drives. Uh, if you want to, my suggestion on hard drives generally, um, if you want to speed up your system, then run Windows, put your Windows partition on the fastest thing you have. So whether it's an M2 drive or an SSD drive, whatever it is that's your fastest piece of uh, storage medium, uh, put Windows on that because that will make everything feel fast. Everything will load up fast. And that's great. That's great. But for recording audio, whatever you like. Yeah, what, what, whatever you like. Whatever you like. Uh, okay, so let's get to the tweaking then. That's enough of all this nonsense. Let's... Let's talk about what we do. So general tweaks to start with. Let's put the overhead on. I'll have me in the corner just for fun. I don't know whether that's useful. <laughs> just in case I speak to the camera, because I'm probably going to be focusing here now, in which case that's not that. Oh, who cares? Let's just go to the top down one. That way I can stand in the way and that won't matter. Right. 
So, I'm sure you'll be calling out tweaks and various bits and pieces in the chat, and that's fine. That's completely fine. But I'm just going to try to show you the simple things. Get rid of that. <laughs> right. What's the simple things then, Robin? Right, okay. So, the concept of tweaking your computer is simply to uh, get rid of things or move things out of the way that might steal from the processor. So, ideally, on a computer running music production, I'm not talking about games, video editing, anything else, I'm talking about music production. What a music production computer benefits from is processor cycles, that processor being always on and nothing else in the way. Those, those are the key things. If you, can, if you can crack that, then you've really got it. And as I say, there will be other things that we can talk about, but those will be troubleshooting things as opposed to general purpose tweaks. This is how to do it. Right. <laughs> okay, so first thing, easy thing, task manager. So right click your taskbar, task manager. You might have to uh, click on the more details tab, like so, yeah? This is always an interesting place. It continues to be useful. And this is where we used to have, uh, this is where MS Config ended up being. MS Config was a, a wonderful place where you would uh, clean out the startup folder and things like that. This is where that exists now. It's also a, just a generally a useful and interesting place. But in here, all we're looking at is startup. This is one of the oldest tweaks, I think, is killing things on startup. So in here, in this place, <laughs> system latency, we'll get to that. In this place um, are all the things that start up when Windows starts. Now, if you have things which are starting up when Windows starts, it's sitting there using up your processor. Probably not very much. But what's more important is that these things might be addressing the processor every now and again. They might be saying, I need to do something. I need to do this. You know, and you've got Lady Gaga over there who's just given the performance of her life uh, into a microphone, into your computer. And you're oh, I don't know, Windows Defender goes, oh, look, look, I just want to do a scan, and the whole thing crackles and it goes horribly wrong. You know, that's not the sort of position that you want to be in. So with anything that's in here, you can pretty much safely go to um, right-click on them and click Disable. See its status goes from Enabled to Disabled. It's that simple. That's it. That's it. Cortana, disable that. This flux thing, disable that. Um, now, you may find there's things in here that you do need. So don't be stupid. So, for instance, I've got a Motu um, M4 audio interface, is what I'm using as my audio interface today. And so I'd like to have the control panel for that uh, running because I might need it. It's there. It's part of what that needs to run. And so I'm going to leave that enabled. Also, similarly, I've got something here for my MIDI keyboard that's attached. No, I haven't. It's not a native instruments one. But I mean, because I, I have a hundred different keyboards plugged into here. So that's the reason for that. So you might find things enabled or disabled, but you can go through and essentially disable them all. Like I don't need flipping Steam coming up all the time, do I? Only when we're playing Among Us. <laughs> so all of these things can come out, except for the ones that you need. See, that was easy. I mean, that's that's it, almost, almost. So there we go, that's your first main tweak. You can do that anyway. Now these things tend to pop up down by the clock down here, and so that's a good place to check to see if you've got a whole load of stuff going on. So if you're running a project and it's crackling, go down here and you'll notice all these things. Some of them can be exited, some of them can be quit. Otherwise, do it here in the task manager and then restart your computer and all those things will be gone and they won't be bothering you anymore. 
So that's a great tip for any system, any time. It calms down the whole system. You get less notifications, less stuff going on. Yeah, yeah, latency mod, it's there, mate. It's there. We'll get to it. We'll get to it, I promise you. Right. Really, the next sort of tweaks. Well, no, a, a few more background ones. Yeah, that'd be good to good to do a couple more background ones while we're on that theme. So we're going to right click. If you've never writ right clicked, writ clicked, if you've never right clicked on the start menu down here, do so. It's a fascinating little menu that will get you to all sorts of places really quick. So if we look in settings, I'm already in power and sleep. I don't want to be there yet. I want to be in. I want to be in. Oh, let's go back. Settings. I want to be in privacy. Would you believe? Privacy. So a couple of things in here. Speech. Online speech recognition. You can turn that off. This is to do with Cortana. Now Cortana is Microsoft's answer to Siri or that uh, Amazon, what's she called? <laughs> the Amazon one. And it's useful. It's very useful in a work or media based situation. Not so useful for making music. And so you can turn that off so it doesn't try to do anything in the background. You don't want Cortana mucking around in the background. So turn that off. The other one is down here, background apps. Now this is purely that it allows apps that you might start up, whether it's something simple like the calculator, to rather than disappear when you close them, to run happily along in the background. And again, that's something which I don't think is particularly helpful. This is, this is not a massive problem, but it's just one of those little tweaks to turn those things off so that they're not there, they're not given the Giving you, the, giving you the possibility of getting in the way or popping up when it's decided to update itself. Right, system. No, I can't think of anything in there. <laughs> so that's the background sorted out. Is there anything proactive that we can do? Well, let's, let's have a look. Let me tell you a couple of things which aren't really necessary anymore. System, isn't that what I want? That's better. So things like Windows security, for instance, this come up here. We're talking about uh, virus protection. Uh, avoid it if you can. There's plenty of virus protection within Windows as it is. Windows security is all right. It's relatively benign, doesn't really trouble you very much, doesn't get in the way. If you install something like Norton, it will ruin the performance of your system. Uh, every time I've seen it, AVG, similar idea. They kind of put themselves into every aspect of your system and really can get in the way, slow things down, and they're popping up every five minutes telling me they've updated themselves. So. Uh, if unless your kids perhaps are playing with your computer, then just use standard Windows security. That should be enough unless you're a dark web type surfing person. So this is the pro, uh, this is the system that I'm using. It's um, an Intel Core i5 1035G4 at a massive 1.5 gigahertz. That's something we'll look at in a minute once we've got past all these bits. Um, and this is the version of Windows that I'm on. It's 20H2. Yeah. OS build 19042.630. Got all of that. And it's actually Windows 10 Home on here. It used to be Pro on the other surfaces. It's on, it's on Home these days. Cost cutting exercise, I suppose. And yes, this is an i5 with 8 gigabytes of RAM. But this is beside the point. Now, um, this is about this PC. La di da di da. 
advanced system settings right so this is something which i think deserves talking about because this is a very common thing that people do to tweak their systems and i'm suggesting to you live on this thing here you don't really need to but you know it's entirely up to you really so in the old system properties which we have here we have this performance and settings bit and people like this there's a couple of things in here that we would always do with, I can't quite remember how far this goes back, but certainly Windows 7, probably Windows XP. I could look that up, but I don't think I could be bothered just now. <laughs> uh, if you want to, to find my Windows XP tweaks, they are actually on this web page here, the Molten Music Technology blog, which is old and I, I haven't updated it in, in quite a while, sadly, but I did put up all my old tweaks for Windows 7, for Vista and Windows XP, which is down here somewhere. Windows XP, there you go. So if those are interesting, you will find it on the moltenmusictech.com website. If you just search for that and tweaking Windows, you should find it. That's by the by. So back to here. Um, people like to press on adjust for best performance. And that removes lots of animations, lots of fading, lots of the kind of lovely stuff that Windows does. I've never been a massive fan of removing it all, some of it, because certainly in Windows 7, what it would do would make the whole OS feel snappier. Uh, in fact, there was even a registry tweak that you would do that would make the menu come up faster. And again, your system would feel really fast. Uh, but it was kind of fake, really, because there was a fake delay built into it that you could reduce. But anyway, the visual effects, the sorts of graphic power that we have these days, this is of zero impact to anything. You can turn them all off and make it look like Windows 7, or you can leave it all on and have it all fading and animating, and none of that really makes a plugin's worth of difference anywhere. Your graphical engine is far, far advanced enough to cope with those sorts of things. Also, um, with Cubase, for instance, with, when they started with their new zone look, I think it was a Cubase 9, you actually had to have um, certain things turned on in order for that to work, which I can't remember now. I think it's enabled peak, something like that. Perhaps that has now passed us. But anyway, don't worry about it. The, the Windows 10 experience is probably better with most of these things left on. Although, oddly, I've turned half of them off. I can't remember why doesn't really matter. I'm just saying it doesn't matter. Now, the advanced tab here, this is something which people talk a lot about. Processor scheduling. Choose how you allocate how you allocate processor resources. Now this is very much a legacy tweak. It's don't I don't believe it's necessary. The reason why I have applied the tweak, <laughs> which I'm saying you don't have to, is purely out of habit not out of anything else, I don't think. So the standard tweak to do here, the idea of it is to put best performance for background services. The idea, thinking behind it, is that that will therefore focus the processor on running the audio interface driver, the ASIO driver in our instance. That really is complete nonsense, but it's, it's an idea that has remained with us for many, many years many many years in fact i think when i was first writing my tweaks um the i mean i can i can absolutely tell you that this at one stage worked because i remember distinctly building a computer system and using this tweak to solve its problems now i think there was um a particular card by rme now rme rme audio they make fantastic audio interfaces and they're one of the few companies that actively develop their own drivers and know absolutely what they were talking about and they knew what they were talking about 20 years ago not just today and there was something going on with some of their pci cards at the time cards went in the back of your computer where you had to make this switch in order for them to work um, they would glitch 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 and you could have a project running glitch 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 and you would come into here put on background services and it would suddenly all pull itself together. So I have actively witnessed that tweak working. And so ever since we've used that tweak and it really, it really hasn't, I don't think it was ever applicable to anything else. However, 
when dealing with technical support uh, with people over the phone, as I did for many years, um, this was one of the things I would tell them to do. And often, you know, they would, they would phone you up, you'd talk them through a few things and they would go away and then they wouldn't call back, which would make me think that that would certainly work. So that I'm sure around uh, Windows XP certainly would have sorted a lot of people out. I don't think it means anything anymore. <laughs> and I'm sure it's the sort of thing that people can argue about, which is also fine. Virtual memory, paging file. Now this is slightly more interesting. Um, I don't know that we necessarily need paging files anymore. We have tons of RAM, we have tons of hard disk space. What this used to do was when you run out of physical memory, it would use a piece of hard drive space in order to uh, throw data onto that so that your computer didn't catch fire and crash. However, these days we have tons and tons of RAM. And what this tends to do is use up an enormous amount of hard drive space for no reason. And so personally, again, I've put in a knee jerk tweak here. Uh, what I've been doing for many, many years is setting this to a custom size and put it to a fixed size, put it to a fixed size of like 4096, put it in, you know, in a binary type fixed size. Don't put whole numbers in there. Uh, do it as a multiplication of RAM, if you like. And so that's four gigs and four gigs. The point of setting it the same is so that Windows isn't spending any time at all trying to readjust the size of the page file in order to cope with something that's happening. You just want it to be a set size, so it's always the same, but Windows is not going to use it anyway, and it just prevents Windows from having to think about it at all. Now, I don't think this is particularly necessary anymore. As I say, we have more than enough RAM for everything these days. But uh, if you want to do it, do it. That's completely fine. So all of the tweaks within the system properties, I don't believe are, are necessary anymore, but because they are so out there on everybody's guide, because everybody's guide copies from everybody else's guide, that I thought it was worth mentioning. So the last thing then, is power. And this is very important. It's very important for the surface and is probably the, the last tweak that really makes a difference to a system. Uh, you can get to it by bringing up the old control panel or you can also get to it uh, this way, I think. System, there we go. And then you want to go to uh, bah, bah, bah. Power and sleep. There you go. I can't see it for looking. It's nothing in here that's helpful at all. The the settings, dialogues, and windows within Windows 10 are a bit rubbish. <laughs> to be said, but never mind. I hope this is still working out here because my chat seems to have frozen. I'm not sure. Is that still going? I hope it's all still going and I'm not just talking to myself. That would be sad. I might have to look at this in another way. Ah, oh, there we go. Sorry, the chat's back. Thank you. I was really a bit worried there. That I was just doing this by myself and not talking to anybody. Pete, good to see you. Okay, I'm in trouble now, right? Pete's in the house, which means he's going to be trying to uh, correct everything that I'm saying. Now, yeah, I, I wouldn't like to say that I have more experience than Pete in this because he does actually work for Microsoft. Yeah, Pete suggests that if he uh, he sets his page file to the default. If you set it too small, Windows will reserve real memory for potential allocations. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, have a. I mean, there used to be a rule of doing it one and a half times your memory was was the idea. But the problem with that is that when you've got like thirty two gigs of memory, that you start allocating it um, tons and tons of hard disk space, which I don't think is necessary. So you know, four gigs I think has. In my experience over the years, as I've done that tweak now for a long time, seems to have created no bother and has, it's one of those things when you're, you're building a system, you've installed Windows, you're going through, you're doing all of the tweaks and you put that tweak in 
and you restart and suddenly your system drive is half the size that it was because it's it's pulled all of that stuff in and that was always very gratifying <laughs> yeah no that's fine two times ram sure i mean you know do whatever you like yeah yeah i mean i've just answered that question i think uh, mr gum mr gumby um that was true back when you had uh 500 megabytes you know 512 megabytes of ram then having a page file of of uh of one gig was good but uh we are beyond that now and that those sorts of things are no longer necessary okay yes power power is the last place of interest i mean this has taken me an hour to get here which is unbelievable <laughs> i say i thought i could do this in five minutes but i'd like to talk what can i say i like to talk power settings now this you kind of ignore this a little bit because i've been messing with this a great deal because we ran into all sorts of trouble with the may update uh, from microsoft that removed all of the customizations that i'd done in here and so i've been fighting to get it back and i have now got it back thankfully uh, but it's just messed all this up a little bit so don't worry about it but on a normal computer on a desktop computer you would normally get a couple of choices you would get a balanced choice and you get a high performance choice and for a music pc you want to choose high performance it's very simple and that is almost enough there's a couple of other adjustments that you can make now if you're on a laptop or a surface you may not get the option for high performance and i will go through that in a minute in the second half of this i'll go through that um, but i'm just going to assume that you have either a desktop or a laptop where this happens one thing to check that if you don't have high performance here if you just have the balanced option and no other options is to click on create a power plan and that may give you um, access to high performance and you could select it that way that doesn't work on this computer sadly but uh, but there we go I will show you that as I say in a minute but there's a couple of extra advanced performance things to do within the plan settings so you go on to change plan settings you don't want the display to turn off particularly when it's on battery it doesn't really matter if you're running it on battery because I would suggest if you're running it on battery then all of the tweaks you're trying to do aren't really going to work because when you're on battery the processor wants to shut down and that's what it's designed to do so you have to work within those co uh, confines if you like i'm assuming that it's plugged in that this is a normal computer you're plugging it in and for that you don't want the display to turn off you just want to leave it on um, but that's a personal choice i would say so under advanced power settings there's a few things in here um which you can which you can tweak bring it a bit more central uh, turning the hard drive off you don't want the hard drive to turn off <laughs> you might be playing your guitar practicing your riff and then you're going to hit record and your hard drive is going to have to re-spin up of course it's not a, a real major problem with ssd drives etc but it's just one of those things that you don't want your computer to power down you don't want things going to sleep you don't want things turning themselves off because when you hit play uh, your whole computer needs to be ready to fire everything all at once all the virtual instruments all the effects all the audio all the streaming of stuff in and out it has to be able to do that instantaneously when you hit the space bar or press play or whatever and anything which has gone to sleep is not going to be able to do that so you avoid those sorts of things so here you put it to to never which is essentially putting it to zero uh, sleep you can have a look at that you don't want your system to go to sleep <laughs> well on battery it goes to, it hibernates after i don't know how long it is a very long time generally put it to never usb settings selective suspend setting put that to disabled you don't want usb port to suddenly suspend or go to sleep ignoring most other stuff in here oh what's that overlay power setting subgroup that sounds exciting i'm not going to mess with that because i have no idea where that came from oh look <laughs> <laughs> yes okay that's come up because of the fiddling that i do the other thing that's important is processor power management you have a minimum and a maximum 
processor state. Now, if you want your computer's processor to remain stable the whole time, so the same speed, there's, a, there's often a bit of misconception over what I mean by that, because what I mean by that is your, your processor is, is spinning at a particular speed, but it doesn't mean that it's actually doing any work, and it doesn't mean that it's maxed out at 100 the whole time. It just means that that's the speed that it's currently cycling. And when it gets information and stuff to crunch, it will do it at the top speed. So when you set it to 100%, your computer, normally speaking, not all the time, but on a normal desktop computer, will mean that it will run at its maximum allowable speed. And that's good. That's what you want. Now, in a surface environment, that may not be quite so good, because that may mean that um, your system will essentially run too fast and overheat and not be very efficient. But we're going to look at that in a moment. And this is the place where we can actually enable and disable turbo mode, which you'll see is also important. So just to, in case it's got a little bit too wordy in here, excuse me, within the power options, put plugged in, shutting off hard disk to never, USB selective suspend setting, put that to disabled, processor power management, put a minimum and maximum both to 100%. and click OK. Save the changes if changes have been made or saved. And just to finish off belts and braces, we're going to go to the device manager, which you can get to again by right clicking on the start button. Go to device manager. And you can just pick out a couple of USB hubs. which are built into the system, which tend to have power management built in, allow it to turn off to save power. You don't want it to do that. So you go into Universal Serial Bus Controllers, just start them up, just double click them and see whether it has that on or not. Now the fact that I've left those on is an indication that it's not a massive tweak, it's just something to have a look at. That is it. That really is it. So to summarize, what did we do? We went to the task manager, start up, and removed anything that starts up when the computer starts up. We went to settings, privacy, turned off background apps, and also turned off Cortana's speech. We then went to the power settings, set it to ultimate performance, which you won't have as an option until you've done a bit of a tweak, which I'll show you in the surface bit in a minute. But set it to high performance, which is plenty, change the plan settings, and stop things from going to sleep, and put processor minimum and maximum to 100%. That's it. That should be enough to get any system working pretty well. Pretty well. Right. So question so far, is that all right? I mean, that took an hour, right? Because as I say, I, I wanted to get across as much information as I could. But if you need to look this up again, just jump to the <laughs> jump to the second hour and all the information you need will be there. So any any questions? Any questions? <clears throat> What I said about being plugged in versus battery is super important. When on battery, you don't want PC slamming the processor while in your travel bag. I've had that happen on a, on a plane. Yeah, it's it's true. I mean, a lot of the things, that, a lot of the tweaks we do are to force the computer to be on all the time, which is good. It's good for audio. It's not good for a laptop. And so some of the things that we're doing are a little bit counterintuitive when it comes to laptops and also explains the reason why some of those things are hard to do and why Microsoft keeps removing them, <laughs> keeps trying to stop us from doing it. Come to this in a moment. <clears throat> um, 
I mean, as far as AMD and Intel go, as far as Windows is concerned, I'm sure Pete can answer this as well, but there's no difference as far as Windows tweaking goes. There's nothing specific to an Intel or an AMD processor that I'm aware of that would make any difference to anything that you do. Yeah, that's purely the number crunching side of the, the business. And they all suffer from the same problem of having bad drivers in various places and trying to deal with the issue of getting information from USB. Let me just put this back to here so you can see me of USB back into and out of the computer. Um, it doesn't matter which processor it is, they're all trying to cope with the same idea of dealing with hardware interrupts. And that's uh, that's where all the, the difficulties lie, I would say. <clears throat> you just changed the USB setting and lost all your audio. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, Brian. Change it back. <laughs> Am I going to do any BIOS tweaks? No, absolutely not. No BIOS tweaks. You can't really get into the BIOS of most laptops these days. Well, some you can, obviously. Um, of larger computers, if you check out my How to Build an Audio PC um, series of videos, I went into the BIOS in in there, the basic things to do on the BIOS. And the, the very basic things are find anything that's to do with thermals and turn it off. Have a, have a computer system, build a computer system that has adequate cooling so that you don't need to manage the cooling, you don't need to monitor the thermals, and, and so your system won't need to clock down in order to cool itself. Laptops are different, we'll come to that in a minute, but for desktops, yeah. So no, there's nothing really that one needs to do in the, in the BIOS specifically. Um, that's a, a kind of a, a power user side of things. But as I say, I mentioned it in my How to Build an Audio PC series, so go and check it out there. <clears throat> yes, it's true that some bits of software have uh, power profiles that they load up for you. Yes, that can be helpful. I always like to be in charge of these things myself. But you know, those things, as I say, can be can be helpful. <clears throat> With graphics cards, with with graphics card free up PC performance for audio. Um, don't quite understand that. Will graphics cards free up PC? Um, <clears throat> well, okay. So there there used to be uh, lots of problems with inbuilt graphics. Um, you used to have on a motherboard if you had graphics that was built into the motherboard, you have your processor one place, graphics somewhere else. That was never a good thing because the graphics was always having to go. Oh, I, I need to, to like change some rendering stuff, and the processor would go. Oh, hang on, let me just put down all that audio I was dealing with and sort you out for a minute, you know. And then you would get terrible glitching. So that was back in the bad days. And the way you got around that was by plugging in a, a discrete video card, and that would process that much more efficiently via the uh, PCI bus, and that was a much better connection, and that would work. So uh, putting a discrete graphics card in would sort out audio problems, bizarrely. This is no longer the case. Graphics now is, tends to be built into the processor, making it super fast. There's no problem with the communication between those two chipsets, if you like, and so it's no longer become an issue. And there are plenty of high performance uh, desktop motherboards out there with integrated graphics because it's in the processor uh, and that's fine it's no longer an issue also laptops you didn't ever used to have that option anyway so uh, yeah but it's become a bit of a non-issue so don't worry about it is there any benefit to a powered USB hub can be yes because there's only a certain amount of power that your computer can supply and if you have a powered USB hub that's supplementing and supporting that so you you're not draining the battery on your device it, you know, it shouldn't be a problem if you're plugged in but there's only so much you know physical electrical power that this can supply i mean i find oh, i've got a hub plugged in no i have what i had oh it's around the corner so i've got a hub plugged in here and uh i've got my keyboard and the cubase dongle going into there I don't have to have the motor going in because that's going in via USB-C and it's got a USB-C port. I mean, it's so exciting. But having two ports on the side of a laptop, wow, that's just, I mean, who could believe these things would happen? But it did, and look, there it is. There's only one on my other surface. Anyway, um, so yeah, uh, powered USB hubs can help um, purely because if 
you're sharing a number of devices from the single port, uh, it can get unstable or unreliable if there's not quite enough power going to everything. It's like I've often had the situation, you know, sometimes when I fill up that four port hub with too many things, or some particular order of things, things, you know, my MIDI keyboard might suddenly disappear and then I unplug uh, the thumb drive or whatever and some, suddenly everything comes back to life again. So, you know, it's purely electrical in nature. Doop, doop, doo. In power management, calling policy uh, I cooling policy. I put passive for laptops to be quieter. Okay. Uh, Black Material official says that he has trouble with NVIDIA cards. Okay, cool. That's not my experience. Um, as a matter of policy, we used to uninstall the PhysX stuff and any of the three. 3D or VR stuff and just run uh, the basic drivers as opposed to all the fluff that comes around and that seemed to help. But otherwise we found NVIDIA drivers uh, cars to be good. The caveats I should throw in here is that when I build a PC for audio, all of the parts are chosen specifically for that. I haven't gone down to Tesco's and said, give us a PC, mate, that'd be great. Yeah, I'll have that one. Look, it's kind of orange. Um, that's not what's happened. We've chosen the motherboard correctly. We've got you know high quality components, a, a big enough power supply. And all of those factors go into having a successful audio PC. So if you've, you know, so problems like with graphics cards tend to come about because the, the PC itself is probably just not up to the job. Having said that, every PC is up to the job. It just depends. You know, we have a lot of different configurations, a lot of different possibilities. And if you're building a computer specifically for audio, then follow my guide and build it properly, I would suggest. Um, and sometimes there's some computers that are just not going to be able to do the sort of the high level professional stuff that we want to do. Should be able to, but maybe you're finding that they can't. VCV rack is graphic card hungry. Yes, it is. I can do a test with that in a moment if you like. Soft tube modular. Yeah, yeah, no, they are because we have so much graphical power these days that it's nice that we're able to use those sorts of things. Uh, Windows 8.1 to 10 update. Is that worth doing? Yeah, I've done that and it works perfectly fine. Um, if you're worried in the least, then do a fresh <laughs> install. So the answer is yes and no, I would say. It depends on your system. You know, it depends if your system is compatible, if everything in it is compatible. But I, I've done it on a couple of systems and had no, no bother, no bother at all. Okay, apparently uh, Alexandri says that Magix has some software called PC Check Tuning that has options for high performance and things like that. Great, yeah. There's a lot of third-party apps out there that claim to do all sorts of things, things like throttle, uh, throttle stop, uh, other cleaning things, registry cleaners, lots of apps out there, system tuners, etc., etc. I've never found any of them to actually solve any problems on my system. They perhaps might give you a, an easier access to something, to turning something on or off, but I think you're better off knowing where those things are themselves. As for cleaning stuff out of your registry, yeah, you know, whatever. I, I don't think that's going to be have any impact on your audio performance. It might have you know, an impact on your system as a whole. But generally speaking, third-party apps have never, I've never found, I mean, I look, I try them out, but I've never found anything which I've, I've used and then my system is better. I've used them and then I'm more confused. I'm used them and I'm unsure as to whether something is better or worse. That happens a lot, but never one that just goes, oh yeah, that's great, that's brilliant. I've never come across one like that. Not to say that they don't, that's just been my personal experience. So I'd rather rely on what I do, okay?
<laughs> yeah, Magics, yes, they have. Yeah, I mean, I am a was, until recently, a, a Vegas Pro uh, user from Magic Software, and that piece of software is a pain in the ass. It is so bug-ridden, so prone to crashing, but Magics know all about software, you know. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. I believe you. I believe you. Exactly, they just want to install Bing search bar everywhere. That's exactly right. Yeah. Okay. Don't trust them. Well, yeah, try it. I mean, try it and see. But do you need to? I've just shown you what cho what tweaks you need to do. So why would you now need to rely on a third party piece of software? Right. Okay. So we've we couldn't talk about this forever, of course. But I think it would be more interesting to get to the nub of the problem with the the May two thousand and four update and what we can do about it. Do you think that's good? Do you think that'd be worthwhile? And then I'd like to demonstrate the. Uh, the performance of the Surface Pro and what happens. We can actually look at what happens when the processor uh, heats up and the, the throttling and those sorts of things, because I think that might be an interesting way to finish this video. Now, the annoying thing is I now need to do this on this computer here, <laughs> which, uh, okay, let me think. How's the best to do this? How am I going to, just going to swap these two things around, all right? So, uh, do I need it plugged in? No, I don't need it plugged in. It's got enough power. Let me shift that one over there a little bit. This one here. Oh, crikey. That's probably a bit bright. Let me sort that out. Oh, I mean, one other thing to just to throw throw into the mix while you're looking at uh, what are you looking at? Are you looking at that? I don't know. What, have you caught up? I won't be able to see the chat for a bit. I hope that's OK. Um, that probably is going to be really important. <laughs> uh, uh, um, oh, darn it. Just go back to here a second. Okay, look, I've got three thumbs down now. Cool, blimey. So, okay, what am I doing? Okay, I think I know what I'm doing. Right, so the problem we had with the 2004 May update was that, well, we've had this problem, it happens uh, a lot with this sort of system because, let me, try to, um, let me try to fill you in, with something like a Surface, which is a brilliant system. I love the whole pen thing. I love the touch thing. It's a beautiful little computer. I love the fact I can take the keyboard off and it's just a tablet. I can touch stuff. I can run synths on it. Uh, this one, actually, we play Geometry Draft. <laughs> Dash and I do my work and Photoshop and stuff on this more than anything else. It's my other one is for music. This is my work one, I suppose you could say. Um, so it's a brilliant machine, but it's not designed for a high level um, piece of software like a, like a door or software synthesizers. That's not really what it's for. It's for surfing the internet, playing media and being out and about and being a slick office work machine. And it's brilliant at that. In order to achieve that, in order to achieve long battery times, for instance, um, and to achieve its thermal profile, which is fanless, this is fanless, there's no fan in it, so is the, the current one. Um, what Microsoft wants is for the processor to be running as slowly as possible. And so the design of this is based on the idea that you can do stuff, you can do stuff, and then when it needs an extra boost, the processor goes warm up to the top, a massive kind of uh, jump in processor speed. It does that process you want to do really nice and quick. And then as you're doing normal stuff again, it then just comes down and calms down and just carries on. So anything which is gonna prevent that from doing that, Microsoft doesn't like because it doesn't want it catching fire. It doesn't want it breaking. It doesn't want its life to be reduced. However, when we're running music software, we want it on all the time. <laughs> we want it all on. 
And so this is a slight battle we have on this sort of laptop. There are many, many other machines like this that are not surfaces, but use similar processes and have a similar policy in trying to slow everything down. That's normal. You know, they're not trying to be mean. That's just how things are. So things like high performance or ultimate performance in the power um, settings kept getting pulled out. And you could put it back through some jiggery pokery and you could refind it. And we did that and then it all worked again. And then Microsoft would find another way of pulling it out. And then we found another way in and put it back again. And then they started removing the advanced settings, which we were able to find through a, a little hack in the registry um, about um, called connected standby or rather was regarding connected standby. And it didn't mean anything. I mean, connected standby is kind of a, a, a sort of a sleep mode thing that we're not interested in. It had nothing to do with that. The tweak was all was purely about when you disabled it, those power options came back. And that was all we cared about. We were then able to turn off turbo mode on the processor, which fixed problems on certain laptops. OK, so unfortunately, with the May 2004 update, our ability to get into the CS enabled entry in the registry was taken away. So we could no longer get access to turning the turbo mode on and off. And that was a problem. If you saw my review in Sound on Sound of a, of a, a massive dual screen Asus Zen book thing that I did, that could not play a single software synth. It had a desktop equivalent processor inside, massive processor, but you know, the laptop version of. But with turbo mode on, it would crackle. It would crackle just playing normal software synths. And it was only when I disabled Turbo could that massively powerful machine be used for just the simplest musical tasks. But you had to turn off Turbo mode. Since the May update, that's been removed and so you can no longer use that computer at all for music just because that has been removed. That's not Microsoft's fault. They're trying to keep things under control. But we need to be able to get access to those sorts of things. Right. So where are those sorts of things? I'm going to need a mouse, I think. Here's the solution. Let's go back to our power settings. Boo, boo, doo, 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 doo. Now, <laughs> yeah, I'm just saying this is the solution. Additional power settings. You can also get to this through the control panel. So this is what you end up faced with. You're faced with this problem where you have no options. There's no options. There's nothing in here. Is that coming out all right? Because the screen's a little bit bright. I can't see that yet. Maybe. I might turn it down a little bit more. Uh, ba, 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 ba. So yeah, there are no options. You go to create a power plan and there's no options. This is what's happened since the latest update. So you can't go to high performance mode. You can't make that tweak. Therefore, you can't make this system suitable for music. It will still do a bit. I mean, you can, you, surfaces are good enough for you to take it out of the box and run music software and it will work, but you will start to hit problems. The, I was experimenting with this on the other machine uh, earlier and running the, the 2600, the Cherry Audio 2600, uh, if I left it unbalanced, I would get little little bubbles, little glitches, just every now and again, just a little tick. You know, nothing bad was happening. Well, obviously that was something bad <laughs> that was happening, but it seemed to be playing back right and you didn't really hear it and then you did hear it. And then just swapping it back to ultimate power mode totally removed that problem. So there's definitely something that's that works by doing this tweak on this sort of system. So Robin, how do we get it back? Well, how indeed. <laughs> so I did this on my other surface. I haven't done it on here, so it may not work, but it worked over there. So let's hope that it will here. Let me show you what I'm gonna do. Right, uh, I've put these links in the description down here. Things you may need. So the first one is this one. Do, 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 do. J 
just copy it. This one hopefully should restore the, our ability to use um, the ultimate power scheme. You can also do one of these, there's an, another one for these that just produces the high performance power scheme. But we might as well go for the ultimate one. I, I don't really understand if there's a massive difference between the two, but it says ultimate. I mean, heck, let's go for that. So I've copied that. I'm going to go over to the start, right click, go for Windows PowerShell Admin. Gosh, I hope this works. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to control V paste it yeah so that's that line I've just copied I'm going to hit return okay something appeared to happen blah 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 ultimate performance excellent let's exit let's see if anything has changed uh, let's get out of here I'm probably going to have to restart I'm just going to check Gosh, it's so much quicker getting it in the old way. Create a power plan. No, so nothing has changed. So at this point, I'm going to restart. Do, do, no, do I want to do that? Yeah. Um, do I need? Can I restart that without ending the stream? Yeah, no, the stream's over there, isn't it? I'm not connected to this one. <laughs> so that's going to be fine. That's not lost me the stream. And I'm going to restart. I'm sorry for the greasy fingerprints because <laughs> my kids play on this a lot. As do I. So I'm almost doing a bit of a cuckoo thing here. How awesome is that? They start off in a flash, these things. Do, do, ba -do, ba -do. Let's hope it's not going to jump into some other update while we're getting there. No, good. Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. I am. Thank you. Dum -da -dum -da -dum. Right, so if we go back to our control panel, Go back to power options. Hmm. I was hoping that would work. Now the um, it's not done yet. It's not over yet. I'm not defeated yet. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right. So back before this last update, that would have presented us with the ultimate power plan, and that's what we've been working on so far but at the moment it hasn't now I, I think the other thing that I need to do might perhaps make this work because the problem with when I did it on the other one is that uh, I'd done so many tweaks on that before in order to try to fix this problem I wasn't entirely sure what it was exactly that fixed it in the end if you know what I if you know what I mean um, <laughs> That's why that the power control is so oh for heaven's sake is so we don't want to look at that. That's awful. Is that the sort of advert I have to have? That's just oh, kill me. So that's me a moment ago. What am I trying to do? I need to go down here. Right, so the there's another one. Now this is uh, the tweet that I found that solves hopefully this problem. Now if this doesn't work, I don't I don't really know what to do. I'll go back to the drawing board and see if I can find another another solution. But this seem to really sort it out. This is a registry edition, uh, which hopefully should get us back to the place where we can access that power plan. If it can't, I'm going to be massively disappointed. <laughs> so I've selected it. I'm going to run the PowerShell again. Oh dear. <laughs> See, the thing with this is you can't test it a hundred times because once you've done it, it's kind of worked and it's done. You know what I mean? So control V. So this is going to add this line to the registry. Completed successfully. Excellent. Oh dear. Right, we're going to try another restart. I want you all to be holding your breath. Or something. <laughs> 
Um, ta -da, ta -da. It's going to be brilliant. It's going to be perfect. Yum -de -dum. Dun -de -dum. I did press restart, didn't I? <laughs> didn't I? Come on. Oh no, I've killed it. I don't know. course when looking for a solution for the connected standby um, enable disable thing you have to go through an awful lot of uh, of web pages and forums and stuff where people are trying to get connected standby to work and that was their problem whereas I'm just trying to find a way to get back these power settings it's really really difficult to navigate your way through all that kind of stuff but here we are this was the solution I thought that I had found <laughs> tense it's tense now. Okay, control panel, power options. Oh, show additional plans. Oh my God. Look at that. Look at that. There it is. Oh my goodness. Now the question is, did I need to do that first tweak? I probably think you probably did. I think that's probably why that's there. So you're going to need to do both. But if you do them in the other order, you could tell me whether this appears or not. So, ultimate performance. Oh, look. I'm just going to turn that back down again. Let's put a little bit of oomph into the screen. A little bit too much. So go to change plan settings. Uh, we would do the tweaks that we would normally do. Put that down to never change advanced power settings now before uh, with the may update you could get to this with the first tweak that i did but all of these would be missing and that's what you had to enable with the cs enabled tweak since that was taken away this was left completely empty well except for one or two inconsequential parts but now because of that second tweak and because of the recent updates to Windows, which have removed the ultimate performance mode at all and the high performance mode, we can now get back into this and these are back. And this is vital. So I can now go into the processor management and set what I want it to be for music making. OK, so that there is the answer to the May 2004 and the 22H Windows update that has removed those things from people using surfaces and similar machines. Got that? Good. So you can find those tweaks on this video in the description to this video. Let me show you. This is this video. We're now watching the live stream of the live stream of the video, the live stream video back the other way. There's people talking to yourself. So down here in the description, the first one, the duplicate scheme one, that creates the ultimate power plan. But you won't see it until you add this registry key here, which says into it rather brilliantly, I think, platform override. That sounds like it's the sort of thing that would do something really, really useful. So those are the two tweaks. They're there in the description. Go and find them. Paste them into PowerShell as admin. Restart. And it will work. <laughs> Ace. Ace. Now let me swap back to the other one. And I'll do you uh, the demo that I talked about. Da, ba, 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 ba. I want to go... So I do not need to do this on a stationary asked uh, Chent. If you if you go into power and you can put it onto high performance, then that's fine. You don't need to do anything. Uh, that option should still be there on regular, normal desktop computers. This only appears to be a factor on um, laptops and tablet and hybrid type computers.
Okay, that's back in. Good. Let's just have a rest for a moment because that was quite intense. <laughs> oh. Right, yeah, there we go. Is that all right? Whew, that worked. That's flying by the seat of your pants, that is. Cool, blimey. <laughs> Thanks, Pete. <laughs> I had my doubts, I have to say. So now what I hope to do is to demonstrate to you why that tweak's important. Because I think that's interesting, yeah? Um, oh, let me just check if there's any other sort of questions that I've missed that are important. Thanks, Mr. Grumpy. Uh, Alexandre, no, I'm sorry, the the Cubase thing didn't um, didn't achieve anything. Uh, I've tried that, looked in that. It, it with the current newest latest updates, that was not something that that helped. At least as far as I could see, it didn't help. Maybe it did. Maybe it did for you. I don't. I don't recall that that helping. <laughs> but then you know, not everyone has Cubase either. Okay, nothing too pressing, I don't think. I don't know what pink four is. Anyway, sure it's not important. Da ba ba. Right, so yes. Let me so let me demonstrate. So what I'm going to do, let's go back to this camera, is I'll run the good old um, door bench performance test while having a look to see what the process is doing, and hopefully I'll be able to show you uh, what the heck and all is going on with all of that. Now, very sadly, oh, uh, somebody wanted to, me to run latency monitor. Let me do that as well uh, while I talk about some other part. So um, there's a couple of things that are important. Obviously, one of them is uh, latency. Now, we normally talk about latency in terms of the amount of time between hitting a key and hearing the sound from a, from a VST soft synth uh, or monitoring through software. Yes, that's one type of latency. That's audio latency. There's another type of latency, which is called DPC latency, deferred call, deferred procedure call latency. And what that is, in a nutshell, there's technical reasons about it, but what I understand of it is that it's the time it takes for a particular driver, which is a particular piece of hardware in your system, to address the processor and to get a response. Um, there's a, a certain amount of time that that takes. Now, bad drivers, bad bits of hardware, go to this processor and speak the wrong language, and the processor goes, what? And it goes, oh, blah, blah, blah. And go, what? What is it that you want? Oh, I just need to do this. And the processor, goes, right, right, okay, off you go. And then it goes and does it. But that time taken from this bad piece of driver driver writing has interrupted the flow of the processor and caused you a glitch. So if you are getting glitches, one of the reasons could be DPC latency. And this piece of software here, Latency Mon from resplendence.com can show you if your system has got problems with DPC latency. Uh, these little things here, as long as they stay green, your system should be fine. If you have red or yellow ones going on, it will tell you that this, your system's probably not gonna do very well. That's an indication that you have a problem driver. That may be um, sorted out through driver updates, possibly even having to disable the particular item in uh, the device manager. Um, in order to get around it. There's some laptops or some computers that you just cannot solve that particular problem. But if you've done all the other tweaks and you're still getting glitches, then run Latency Monitor and have a look to see if there's a problem in your system. You may find that if you run it overnight, it will go bing or there's a problem. And actually, I wouldn't worry about it because you might get a glitch once in a blue moon. That might just happen. But 
that's not something to worry about. What you need to worry about is if you turn this on and it's red the whole time. And the reason it would be is because it's probably a, a cheaper laptop. Well, perhaps I don't mean to make any judgments through that. It's just that there's probably cheaper hardware, generic hardware that doesn't have great drivers or has very old drivers, something like a modem or a network adapter, those sorts of things. And they can often just hold on to the processor too long, longer than it needs to, and that will cause a problem in audio streaming. Low latency audio streaming. Um, so, I mean, other tips you could say if you're dealing with problems here is to go into flight mode, turn off the internet, disable your network. All of those sorts of things may help uh, sort out that kind of issue. Anyway, back here. So currently, let's have a look to see what our processor is set to. I think if I'm right, it was set to 100%. Power options change plan advanced we'll try to keep this bit open so under processor power management minimum and maximum we're looking at plugged in it's at hundred percent so that means that essentially I'm telling the processor to run as fast as you can now this is not a desktop system if it's on a desktop system that would mean it would jump up to say I don't know 3.6 gigahertz and it would sit there and that would be groovy but this is not that kind of system and so as you can see we get this kind of business so this is the frequency of the of the first core and it is leaping from its base frequency of 1.1 up to its turbo boost of about uh, 3.6 3.5 3.6 and that's what it, that's the normal behavior for that processor now one of the the things that has gotten worse with surfaces is, is that its base frequency has declined while the turbo speed has got bigger which is great for power saving great for battery great for using Photoshop when you're just twiddling fiddling and then you need a big boost for doing a bit of processing or rendering that's great but for audio it's not great we would much rather have a high base clock and no turbo at all for that matter, but a higher base clock would be nice. But, you know, we have to deal with what we have to deal with. And this is what we have. So why is this a problem? Well, <laughs> uh, well, let me show you, I guess. So, um, so here we are. Let me run Cubase is gonna be the key for this. I've got me dongle in over here. So we'll leave that up. Where's Cubase? Haven't I got it shortcutted somewhere? No, there it is. I'm on 10.5. I couldn't be bothered to install 11. It's too too big. <laughs> too big would take too long. But 10.5 will do. Jim, hi. How you doing? Ba, 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 ba. Okay, one of my many tests. We're going to go for 60 of these. So this is Doorbench test, the old school one. I think they're working on a new one. I haven't actually taken the time to look at that. Uh, I really should. Now I want to get rid of everything so I can see the other thing behind. I hadn't thought about that until just now. Is that going to be easy? Might be. Is that, I if that's sticking out the side a little bit. <laughs> It's going to crowd the whole thing. Okay, so the the concept with the door bench test is that it's a simple eight track project um, that's just playing some music like that. Um, but at the same time, it's actually playing forty tracks of sine waves, which is what all these are here. And the idea is that you load it up with plugins, and the point at which your system crackles is the is the benchmark for your system. And you can go to their website and compare it with other people's systems. It's a great way of comparing systems, but it's also a great way of just testing uh, the processing power and stability of your system. So if I was running this on my 9900K over there, I would run, I don't know, 400 plugins, right? Uh, on this Surface, 
I'm currently running 60. So I've got a whole row of 40 and then I've got a row of 20. You can see that the ones that enabled are in blue, the other ones are all disabled. Are you, are you with me? So the plan is, is you just enable plugins until it chokes. Now you'll see that interesting things happen to the processor over here. There's no explanation for any of it. It's just what happens. So at the moment it's going, I'm just going to sit down here. I'm going to sit down. I'm going to sit down here because I think something bad's about to happen. That's what it's saying to itself. So what I'll do is we run this 60 plugins and I'll start adding them and we'll just see what happens. The other thing to look at is temperature. We'll swap between the two from time to time. Sadly, I can't show both at once. I don't think. <laughs> so we'll stay with the frequency for the moment and we'll look at the temperature in a minute. Hope you can still hear me. I won't have that too loud. <laughs> Sorry, Jim. I wasn't meaning not having a conversation. I'm busy. Busy right now, Jim. Call me later. <laughs> Sorry, what was I doing? Yeah, okay. So we're going to enable more of these plugins. The reason why there's a little eight track sort of band playing is so that you can hear it crackle. You don't want to listen to sine waves. That's what all these are here. But you can listen to the band and when that crackles, you know that's when it's all gone too far. I can also bring up the, uh, the Cubase meter there, which will also give you an indication of what's going on. 60 is already quite near the limit for this system. Oh, do you see it glitch at that point? Now what you want to see is, is what's going on here that makes that happen. It's that processor going up and down, do you see? See now it's dropped, it's dropped a bit further and it's not going back up again and that's why we're slightly on the edge. Oh it is, it is and it isn't. Let's just check the temperature. Okay, that's getting getting toasty. So I'm going to continue loading it up a little bit for the moment. And you can see that as the, the frequency of the processor keeps dropping down, um, it's doing that while we're trying to load the processor up with plugins. So it doesn't make a lot of sense. It seems counterintuitive. You're asking for more processing power in Cubase and the surface is responding by going, nah, I'm going to drop down over here. So it gives you a little bit of, of boost power and then it takes it away. And the problem is that you can add plugins within that boosted space and then uh, find you, that your project no longer works because the processor has stepped down all by itself even though I'm on a hundred percent minimum and maximum processor mode within the power settings. Okay, I'm going to make a change, which is back in the power settings. I'm going to swap it to balanced. Now this is what Microsoft would like you to run it at. Now, as I said earlier, I did have some problems with, um, Sorry, I did have some problems with uh, glitching in the audio when I had it on balance mode, but I just want to see what happens uh, to the processor when we do that. So it's now in, in balance mode. Let's go back to here. 
see that? Isn't that interesting? Isn't that interesting? It's gone flat. So let's go back to Cubase. See what happens when we run our project. Do you see how now the audio performance is all the way down here? I've suddenly got all this space in which to load plugins on balanced mode. How can this be? You know, I don't actually know. <laughs> but let's just see what happens. The temperature is going to be an interesting factor in this. Do you see how that's climbing now that the processor is running at full whack, which is precisely what Microsoft doesn't really want you to do. But playback is actually good. I'm going to go all the way up to 80 because I'm a devil. See the temperature? This is really nice and warm now at the back. Lovely, lovely and stable. This is awesome at this point. Absolutely awesome. I'm going to start adding some more plugins. Oh. So I'm, yeah, I'm filling up the processor with more and more plugins, giving it more and more work to do. Look. Now, why has that happened? If I go back to temperature, it's when it hits 80, as soon as it hit 80 degrees, it starts to clock down. It doesn't matter what you've, ooh, doesn't matter what you've told, um, the processor to do, doesn't matter what you've set the power settings to. Uh, go away, thank you. It then starts to clock down because it has to keep that temperature down because that's the thermal nature of the system. And there's a glitch. There's another glitch. because the processor is clocking itself down. And because you've loaded it up with plugins, the processor now can't cope. It's going to max out because the processor is stepping down. The load on the processor remains the same. The whole thing just starts to fall apart. As I get rid of more plugins, hopefully it should start to recover. Yeah, it's doing okay again now. But the problem that we encounter is that you don't you don't know. You have this juggle. You can't rely on the number of plugins you can run in that project because you you don't know. You might add one plugin, the thing heats up, and then you're going to have to wait for ages for the whole thing to cool down before you can finish that project. Well, you never can because it just leaps up in temperature and you can't quite cope with that. It's the instability which is the problem. At least for me. I mean, for some people that might be a completely fine way to work. You just work within those limits of an ever-changing processor. But personally, I would prefer for the processor to stay at one frequency, one with which it can cope with the cooling, so that I can know exactly the limitations of my system how far I can go. Yeah, because I can now add more plugins again because the playback is fine, but then it will hit the heating point and it will clock back down again. So what can we do? Well, at the moment we have these two situations that are slightly odd. 
you have ultimate performance mode where the processor kind of moves about you know at 100 percent and the turbo up and the turbo down and it sort of handles a few things but then it, it rockets back down again then it goes up it rockets back down again you get a glitch and it's like i can do about 60 plugins a little bit more and it just about holds it together um, i can run it on balance mode where i can run a lot more plugins but then it will hit the temperature and then it will clock down and then the whole thing will fall apart i then got the other problem of having little glitches in the audio when i play a synth on balance mode at least that's been my experience it doesn't always happen but sometimes it does and go into ultimate mode seems to sort that out although then you can run less plugins <sighs> it's frustrating and this is not just a surface pro thing it's to do with the nature of these sorts of processors so there's one other option and this is what i tend to do and that's to go back into your power options and go to your maximum and minimum processor state and set them to 99. Now what that does, what that should do, hopefully, if I got that in the right place, yes, that should turn off turbo mode. And that should, with a bit of luck, keep the processor absolutely steady at its base clock. Now its base clock is painfully slow but you will always get that amount of processing power out, hopefully. So let me see if that's actually gonna work. It doesn't seem to at the moment. That seems to be stuck very high, which is a little bit alarming. <laughs> Maybe that will change in a minute, which is a shame because this has all been going really well up to now. So let's get this running again and see what happens. No, that's not what I expected at all. Oh, um, I'm still in back. Uh, am I? Hang on. <laughs> Let me just check my settings before I come up with an explanation as to why something isn't working quite how I expected it to. Uh, power options. Yeah, I'm still on balanced. Okay, go back to ultimate performance mode. Change settings in this. Advanced settings. Okay. Okay, good, right. Okay, now it's dropped back to where I thought it would have done before. Good. So to get any playback at all, I'm going to need to take out quite a few of these um, plugins, I feel. So we're just going to keep going back until we get playback. Okay, this is what I was expecting to happen, and it finally has, which is good. <laughs> so putting it back onto ultimate performance mode, and taking the um, taking the turbo mode off by reducing it to 99% on minimum and maximum, I've now got a flat processor speed. It's at about 1.4, which is not as bad as the 1.1, which is the base clock, I think, uh, of this particular system. So it has given me a little bit. But what I get in this is a completely fat processor that is not going to overheat. If you look at the temperatures, there's no way that's getting to 80%. It's just not going to happen. So the temperature is stable. 
the frequency is stable, I can absolutely count on the sort of size project that I can do every time. Do you see what I'm saying? Oops, not that one. The downside is, of course, that I've no longer got that elasticity in the processor. I've no longer got that turbo mode which can jump up in order to do something quick while I'm trying to do other things. So the fact that I filled up the processor with um, plugins means I can't really do much else. So everything else is very, very sluggish. But the, the thing that's positive about this is that I know that I can run uh, 50 plugins. Is that what I've got here? This is on 25, so I've got 40 plus 25. I've got 65 plugins. Oh, see, that's just a little bit on the edge. I probably need to take off a couple more just to uh, just to hold it together. So, uh, to to summarise this, then I suppose the once you've done the tweaks, it gives you the option to work within the power configurations that the, something like the Surface has. If you leave it unbalanced, you might be able to run more plugins, but you're in danger of it getting too hot and stepping down and it being a little bit up and down. And also you get you tend to get problems when playing uh, software synths, low latency software synths, you tend to get a little bit of glitching in the background. If you put it on ultimate mode, you get the problem of at a hundred percent of the processor you get the problem of the thing overheating and erratic processors up and down dropping out so you're never entirely sure again how many plugins you can run it's only when you set it to 99 percent and remove the turbo mode do you get both perfect playback on your vst instruments and a known quantity of plugins that you can run Any questions? <laughs> there you go, that's the two hours. Did it, two hours and we're done. So yeah, question time. I hope that was helpful. I hope that gives you an idea as to why these things happen, why they don't happen, what you can do about it. On the one hand, you can, go, you can say, oh, that's a bit crap. Yeah, it kind of is, but we're dealing with the nature of the technology that's in this kind of laptop. And these are everywhere. You know, there's a lot of hybrid laptops, there's a lot of laptop technology which does exactly the same thing because they're trying to maximise battery life over anything else. And that's the problem that we get into. But, as I've shown, hopefully, you can stabilise it, you can set it to... Uh, to run it is base clock and then you will have a known amount of plugins that you can do. Normally speaking, when I'm running stuff on my Surface, I kind of leave it a little bit freer than that. Um, it's only when I start having larger projects that I need to sort of shut it down a bit more so that I can be certain that I can run it and I don't end up in a situation where I can no longer open the project, if you see what I mean. Um, but normally speaking, in normal use, certainly in live performance, never have a problem because you you mitigate against those sorts of situations. You don't use massive soft synths live necessarily. You would calm it down a little bit or you'd bump stuff to audio if you're using any sort of loops. It just depends on what you're doing. But if you're using it, I suppose, as a sound source, then you're not going to be pushing the processor that far unless you're playing layer upon layer upon layer, in which case you need a different computer really. Um, but this is has no bother playing software synths all by itself. You know, it could be a, a piano, it could be um, whatever, whatever you like. If Cubase would ever shut itself. <laughs> uh, so, you know, something which is a bit chunky, like the piano. I've got a sustain pedal here somewhere. You know, it's completely fine. Low latency, I'm down at I think 128 samples.
yeah it's a great it's a great machine it's a very very great machine um i've thoroughly enjoyed it. it was one of the best choices i think i ever made when i decided to go the surface route it's been immense fantastic <laughs> <laughs> but not for massive projects. No, no, not for massive projects, but for running Ableton Live, for running um, software synths, for running Bitwig, whatever you like. I can record my modular directly into it, multi-track recording, does all that stuff. No problem, no problem. You just have to make decisions on the sort of performance level that you're after and what you want, whether you value stability over, you know, those sorts of things. I think I've, I think I've done that. I think I've shown that. So I won't keep going over it. Um, any thoughts from the chat, please? Four dislikes. Did we pick up another one? Awesome. I haven't even mentioned the B word. <laughs> Is the Cubase thing an issue? The fact that it doesn't shut? The fact that it shuts all of its windows and leaves kind of its shell open? Is that kind of a weirdness as opposed to by design. I just assumed that they wanted it by design for reasons I couldn't ascertain. <laughs> anyway, so yes, if you have a have a question, ask it now or forever hold your peace. Yeah, uh, I mean, regarding cooling, then then yes, absolutely. You can stick a fan on the back or some kind of uh, thing. I used to do that. I mean, with the first Surface I tried, the Surface Pro 3, that did have uh, heating and throttling problems uh, a lot. I mean, it was brilliant. It, it worked out of the box. There was never any glitching. Its only problem was that it would get too hot and then, you know, you're playing anything. And then the processor would just go wham all the way back down again. That was before I'd worked out all the all the, the stages that we're at now. You know, with the Service Pro 3, I was flying a bit more blind. <laughs> but yeah, I've got a, a USB fan somewhere and I used to stick that on the back and you could show, you know, your system's crackling, 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 put a fan on the back. Oh, it's so much better now. And that would drive poor old Microsoft Surface team nuts. <laughs> they would hate seeing that. But people were doing it with gaming as well. Um, you know, it would absolutely work. And it would, it could help in this situation, yes. But, uh, you know, I, I I don't want to have to fudge it. I don't want to have to get a fan out and stick that on the back. That just seems like too much work. You have to, I think, it's, it's better, I feel, to aim to work within the constraints of the system that you're using, you know. And uh, for what I use it for, for what I do, it's it's plenty it's plenty and what i do is mostly fiddling about i suppose if this is your only music making machine then i guess you'll probably find that a bit more restrictive which brings up the question should you get the i7 rather than the i5 possibly my experience of that because i had an i7 surface book that i got on loan from microsoft a few years ago and the problem was that it would get hotter quicker so although it had potentially more headroom for running plugins, it would hit the throttle point quicker. And so you'd end up being able to do less on it <laughs> than the i5. Now it does have some active cooling on the i7 as well, so that might be helpful. So in keeping things cool, but the problem with it was that uh, it would just mean it would cool it quicker. It wouldn't stop it getting to that 80 degrees point at which it throttled. It would just, um, you know, be able to cool the processor faster. So in in my view, the i7 ended up being a bit of a false economy, you know. <clears throat> Is that the right word? Because it was far more expensive. Probably not the right word. It wouldn't give you the power that you think it would for what we're doing. Whereas the i5, because it's not such a fast processor, it doesn't heat up quite so quick, doesn't hit the thermals quite in such a, a, a way, and is actually much better value for money. That would be my view on it. <clears throat> and yes, this is Surface specific and this type of laptop. This is not about desktops. For a desktop, get the fastest thing you can, put a whacking great big heat sink and fan on it. 
That's the answer for desktops. This is, we're talking about the nuances involved in dealing with power saving processors of the type that are in this machine. <laughs> Hi Scott, you just missed the most fly by the seat of your pants type Windows tweaking <laughs> surface wrangling there has ever been on the internet. So yeah, you know, not much, you know. Yeah, computers do crash, you know. That that is a thing. It is a thing. If you're if you want to be sure, the best thing to do um, you know, if you want to troubleshoot a crashing problem on a computer, the absolute best thing to do, one, make a backup of your system exactly as it is, back up to another drive. Two, reinstall Windows, wipe, well, wipe the hard drive, reinstall Windows from scratch and just the applications you want to use. Do that, update Windows completely, update all your drivers, update the software that you're running and the audio software, install nothing else. Don't connect it to a network after you've installed all the updates see if you still get the same crash in the same project. That is the only way of working it out because in my experience, 90% of the time, it's some other crappy thing in your system that's causing the crash. Something else has caused the problem, not the actual thing you're trying to do. Um, yeah, and then if you've still got the problem, I would then uninstall plugins. Keep going through all your plugins until, yeah, that because that could also be could also be a problem <clears throat> but that's the process and if you can't be bothered to do that then I would say live with the crashing and save a lot any experience running audio stuff on a Linux distro yeah sure I mean we used to do uh, our door on and Rose Garden was it on a thumb drive and I and mean, it can work. I think you're trying too hard. I, I don't see the benefit. I mean, I guess if you're the sort of person who wants a computer which is only doing that that one task, that one thing, then then that's fine. Or if you want to, you know, get deeper into Linux and, and run that as your office software as well, that's fine. I, I just, I find it too much work uh, when it runs fine on Windows. So uh, it's like trying to solve a problem that isn't really there. Uh, at least that that's that's my experience but if you're having trouble with your computer then of course you're always looking for solutions but my solution would be to get a, a computer that's better designed for doing music software so you know <laughs> uh, I don't have a great depth of experience with Linux no I used to I mean I use uh, Linux Mint as a uh, a troubleshooting platform uh, for getting into people's computers that have broken. Uh, we also used to use it as a virtual internet machine on our um, on systems we used to send out to people so that they could actually use the internet within a virtual machine on their computer so that there was no possibility of getting virus attacks on their actual computer that was running their studio. You know, that had some, some decent thinking and ideas behind it. Uh, but um, But no, no, I'm I, I don't really have time in my life uh, for sorting all that out and I I admire people who do. Okay, I think I think we could probably uh probably call that a night, shall we? Is that all right for everybody? This sort of ends my computer music week, I suppose, but I I'll have a We'll do a bit of thought about it on Sunday. Sunday night is my regular standard Molten Music Monthly end of the month a chin wag. Uh, just come along, bring some beer, we'll chat about stuff. Uh, no doubt we'll chat about the whole Behringer thing. Um, I, I think I might be able to do a little bit of a, a preview of a, a very exclusive range of modules uh, that uh, I might have something to do with. So that's a bit special, maybe. I don't know, but we can talk about that. We can talk about other things and um, uh, generally have a bit of a twin chin wag about what's coming up. Um, we've got a whole new year coming up soon. 
uh, what my plans are, what Molten's going to be doing, and we can have, uh, and we can, yeah, do all of those sorts of things. I think that might be nice. It might be the last one of the year. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. So come along to that. That's Sunday night, eight o'clock GMT. Uh, it'd be great to see you there. And uh, you know, we'll just be it'll be direct chat as opposed to to faffing around. Well, let's do I have anything else to show? I was thinking about perhaps demoing a couple of my favorite software synths. I don't know, is that too much of a faff? <laughs> Maybe. Who knows? Who knows? Uh super helpful, Chen. Thanks. Your that's a nice comment. Thank you very much. Um good. Glad it was helpful. Glad that was helpful. And I'm so glad this worked this evening. It took a lot longer than I thought it might, but that's okay, because I just keep on talking. Keep on talking. I've got more stuff to talk about. Uh, so thanks ever so much for sticking with me. Much appreciated. Um, and this video, of course, will be available for re-watching, so you can access it at any time. And I should probably cut it down to some kind of five-minute summary. would also probably be good. So that'll do us. Thanks very much. Take it easy now. And... Um, because I'm, I'm gonna have to find the button to turn off. I know I'll stick, uh, I'll stick something else back on as some incidental music. Uh, while I work out how to turn this thing off. Good night.